Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now most, if not all, graphics cards these days come with GDDR5 memory as standard. If you're looking for something a little bit older and cheaper, then it might come equipped with GDDR3 instead. But what about 4? As I was looking around for my next purchase, I noticed the lack of GDDR4 cards on the used market. Now they definitely existed, but were very short-lived. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the first GDDR4 GPU was the 512MB X1950, released in 2006 from ATI, and the last, released in 2008, was the 4850, specifically from PowerColor, also with 512 megabytes. Now in between those two, there are about five other cards, all from ATI, with NVIDIA not releasing any. But why? Today we're going to be discussing the abandonment of this memory type before it was really adopted. Now GDDR4 isn't to be confused with DDR4, which is of course desktop RAM, just to put that out there for any of you who aren't quite sure. So the first factor that caused only a handful of GDDR4 GPUs to be released was that it was far more expensive than 3, even with the same amount of memory. For example, a 512 megabyte card would have cost more to develop that with 4 than it would have with 3. This was pretty obvious, money is always a deciding factor, but it wasn't just the financials. GDDR4 actually used more power than older memory types as well, but apparently it did run cooler. Even this didn't make up for its minimal increase in performance though, and combined with the higher latency, it seems as though GDDR4 was doomed from the beginning. Now we've actually got a couple of benchmarks here to show you of older games running with a GDDR4 4850 and as you can see it does okay. So by no means were these cards bad, they were just somewhat, well, pointless. I like to try and keep technical explanations simple and easy to understand, so saying it's pointless is the easiest way for me to do that. GDDR5 cards became the standard less than a year later for ATI cards and as I mentioned before, Nvidia skipped it altogether, which was a pretty smart move. So why was it even used by ATI if it didn't offer any significant performance, had higher latency and it isn't really that much higher in frequency? Well, from what I understand, they co-developed it and they didn't want it to go to waste after putting time and money into it. Just imagine that if you and your friend invented something, but that same thing was already almost obsolete, thanks to someone else improving on your invention's functionality and effectability, you'd still try and push it out to market, because it's still your hard work. GDDR4 also made for a great sounding marketing gimmick at a time when Nvidia were pulling ahead. Take a product and slap a higher number on it, and less intuitive consumers will be led to believe it's better, which, of course, a tiny little bit of research would dismiss. So there we have it. If you look on places like eBay, you'll find a few cheap GDDR4 graphics cards, but they're also all DirectX 10 or lower, so they wouldn't really make for a sensible purchase unless you just plan to play older games or titles that support the older API. So there we have it guys, I know this video was a little bit different, but it just sort of came to my mind after I was looking around for a slightly older and another budget graphics card to do a few tests with. So I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless, leave a like if you did, leave a dislike if you didn't, let me know if you've had any experiences with GDDR4 graphics cards, you might still have one in your system. So as always guys, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.